best divers have gathered. And tonight, the first members of the 2024 Olympic diving team will be earned. Will it be a repeat performance for Krista Palmer and Allison Gibson in the synchro three meter? They are being pushed hard by Sarah Bacon and Cassidy Cook. And what makes the Olympic trial special is this. Families and friends, the loved ones who've supported their people through years of training and this is the culmination for many. It is the United States Olympic team trials in diving from Knoxville, Tennessee. And we welcome you to the beginning of this amazing week in which the entire U.S. Olympic diving team will be named. And it is only fitting that once again we begin with Cynthia Potter. You were named to four teams yourself. This is your ninth as an announcer. And you only have, what, 12 more to go, I think, right? This is my favorite <laughs> week for USA yeah. Diving. My favorite of all time. Well, tonight, it's fascinating. It's a rematch of the trials three years ago in Indianapolis. The same two teams battling for one spot. How are the teams approaching this tonight? They do it what seemingly is different. Cook and Bacon, that is Cassidy Cook and Sarah Bacon, are very intense looking. They have a focus that is different when we see them on camera and when they're preparing for their dives than Krista Palmer and Allison Gibson. They are much more focused seemingly, and I keep saying that because this is Salon Palmer and Gibson <laughs> before the competition. They bring joy and happiness and they play during the because that is what keeps them loose. The fact that they do it differently than Cook and Bacon means it works for each of them. You gotta respect that. All right, here are the brief rules. The key word in all this is synchronized. Yes, they all will perform five dives. They have to do the first two dives, easy dives, low degree of difficulty. They're gonna do a whole bunch of different groups. They can't repeat a group. And their preliminary score from the first five dives carries over, so these five dives are it. So think about what you're going to see tonight as act two of a play that had a seven hour intermission because the first five dives were held early today. These are the scores and they count. Cook and Bacon start tonight slightly more than 11 points ahead of Gibson and Palmer. It's really just two teams. How significant is the 11 points? It's not going to be significant after three dives. It could be more and it could be less, but one dive can make up 10 points. So what we have tonight in the synchro competition, there are six teams diving, as you can see. All six will again dive tonight, five dives. The first two rounds are low degree of difficulty. The last three are their own. And this team hopes they can get it to the last dive where they do by far the most difficult dive in women's synchro diving. Yeah, there's no other team in the world that is doing this dive in synchronized diving. And the other facet of tonight well, we really will focus on four divers with great honors to the other teams. This incredible honor to be in the Olympic trials. We'll see teenagers like these. Avery Geese is on the left, Ella Rosselli on the right. They're both 18 years of age, getting the incredible experience that they hope pays off four and eight years from now. And remember, synchronized diving is all about unison. Can you do the same dive and have it look exactly the same as your partner? That was pretty darn good. These two teenagers are needed in an Olympic trials because as we know, Cassidy Cook and Sarah Bacon are the most experienced. They're in their fourth Olympic trials. And sometimes that's what it takes to get used to this kind of pressure. And there are the scores, 43-2. Again, every dive in the first two rounds are the same degree of difficulty, 2.0. And the second team on the left is Lena Sculti. Finished third in the uh, trials three years ago, and we have to keep kicking ourselves to say, yes, it was just three years ago. <laughs> the last trials. <laughs> it's true. Lena Sculti uh, dove collegially both at Stanford and USC, and Fowler on the right from Indiana University was just second in the three meter at the NCAAs in March. Remember, these two first dives by every team are simple dives that only carry 2.0 degree of difficulty. Starting in round three, 3.0 and above is not unusual. All right, so Linus Skulte and Ann Fowler with their first dive. 
how are Cook and Bacon, the leaders, approaching this tonight? Andrea Joyce has some insight. Well, Ted, I talked to them after the prelims, and you would never know that they were the leaders. Of course, they know that the scores carry over, but they are adamant about treating tonight like a brand new competition. As far as they are concerned, everyone is at zero. Now, that mentality and that attitude has really been developed over the years of frustration and injuries and heartbreak. Cassidy and Sarah say that everything that they've been through has forced them to focus on the moment. They showed that intensity that uh, Cynthia talked about earlier in the prelims and Ted they're determined to bring it again tonight. They were so consistent in the five dives that were held early this afternoon. Now another pair of teenagers. Lily Witty the near board Bailey Sturgill on the far board 19 and 18 respectively. We talked about the first two dives being simple dives. The score that you would want to sort of used as a goal would be 50 points. That's a lot of points, but that's an international standard that would keep you in one of the top three spots if you were 50 points or above in the first two rounds for your dive. And teenagers, both college divers, Lily Witty at Indiana, Bailey Sturzel's going to Rutgers. Dive next year. 43 plus points on that dive. When you talk about a veteran, We've seen Samantha Pickens a lot. This is her fourth Olympic trials. Three divers, women divers, in these trials that are 32 years of age. Kendall Knight is her partner, University of Kentucky diver. It's so fun to hear, that was a beautiful dive by the way, so fun to hear the verbal cues that one diver gives so that they know when to start. Let's talk a little bit more about synchronized diving and what it requires. The judges judge the start position, the approach, and the takeoff. The coordinated timing of the movements in the air, are they together, do they mirror each other? The similarity of the angles going in the water, are they vertical? What about their distance from the springboard? Are they further out in the pool than their partner? And are the timing, do they hit the water at the same time? So many things to consider. Good dive. That got closer to the 50 point mark. Yes. But again, it's really, the, the math indicates it's two teams for this one spot. And here they are. Krista Palmer is on the far board, a bronze medalist in Tokyo in the individual three meter. Allison Gibson, who retired after the games in Tokyo, but 14 months ago, Krista Palmer called her and said, please come back. Gibson said yes. cadence is so important they're starting off with a beautiful inward dive in the pike position they have beauty they have grace they really have all of the physical power that's a beautiful first dive and again just shy of that 50 point mark where gibson and palmer who competed both synchro and individual in tokyo Cassidy Cook was on the 2016 Olympic team. Of these top four divers tonight, Sarah Bacon is the only one yet to make an Olympic team. And it's something she has said has been her dream since she started diving at age eight. Is tonight her night? It might be because she is maybe the best individual right. diver yep. in this competition and has been known one, that way two, worldwide. Three, Oh boy, that's the way to start. If you were diving last and you just did that dive, you might be really happy coming out <laughs> of the water. Remember, their focus and their intensity, it looks a little different, but what works for them really works. Winbo Chen knows a good dive when he sees it, and he's exuberant. He has been Sarah Bacon's coach at the University of Minnesota for a long, long time, and Cassidy Cook 
went to Minneapolis within the last year, moved there to train with Sarah Bacon for this. And 51-6, that extends their lead by several points with four dives remaining. A chance to visit with both Allison Gibson and Krista Palmer for a while yesterday. And Krista Palmer made a point, said, I'm enjoying the journey more. And she said, since Allison Gibson came back last year, they're more together as a team. You look at them like that, Cynthia, you would not know what the scores are right now. No, you'd have no idea. I mean, you, you don't question the fact that they are happy in what they're doing, they're joyous, and aren't they happy that Allison Gibson came out of retirement to do this because it has brought Krista Palmer a great deal of happiness in her life. Well, we're into round two dives again these are 2.0 degree of difficulty dives Elsa, Ella Rosselli and Avery Geese at 42 points and Fowler and Linda Sculte just dove at 40.8 so we pick things up again with Lily Whitty and Bailey Sturgill currently in fourth place what's interesting is most of the top divers we're talking about tonight started in the trials as teenagers yeah, it's true Very nice. It's sometimes difficult to coordinate somersaulting and twisting because it adds more elements than just either twist or somersault. And they do it very nicely. You know, they need these teenagers because they need them in four years and they need them in eight years. And that's what happened with Cook, Bacon, and especially Krista Palmer and Allison Gibson also. None of them are in their first or second trials. They're third or fourth. And it, it, we saw the same thing earlier today with this team in particular, that they are just, again, they're expressing the fact they're just enjoying the experience. And they should be. They should be. And why not? This is, this is the most fun meet every four years, in my opinion. You have to make it fun, but yeah. yes. And the night. So you look there's on the far board, Samantha Pickens, the veteran on the near board. The best synchro divers are, come from the best individual divers. And that's what Samantha Pickens brings to this party. She won the NCAAs and she is a gorgeous diver. Kendall Knight is so aesthetically pleasing. Just a toe point and stretch that any ballet dancer would want to have. They are a pretty pair to watch. It highlights that the U.S. has really had more of an emphasis on synchro diving in the last 12 years, let's say, and has been successful. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's funny, a little background. Synchronized diving evolved out of entertainment diving in the days of the great aqua shows. The divers performed double dives in clown suits <laughs> as well as acrobatic dives. And this is, became an Olympic sport. You know, they really look like they're flowing. They're in cadence, unison. <laughs> the great Palmer parents, if you watched three years ago, you remember Mitch and Mickey and their story of traveling the country, living in a truck. Yes. <laughs> I, I really think that they have a good feel for each other. And you could see that even when they're not on the diving board. They enjoy each other's company so much. Well, so do Cook and Bacon. It's the Palmer. 32 years old, didn't start diving until she was 20. That is remarkable. <laughs> We're talking about teenagers and people making Olympic teams as teens. She didn't start in this sport until she was 20. And she's a bronze medalist from the last Olympics individually. Fabulous. it again in the second round. They were almost 15 points ahead. They're going to be closer to 20 points ahead after that beautiful dive. That's the dive that kept them out of the Olympic team three years ago. We saw Sarah Bacon, who's from Indianapolis. Her parents, you saw them briefly there, Steve and Barb, 
what joy they can experience in the next 20 to 30 minutes. Nice. This team has not missed a beat. They have picked up just where they left off earlier today, and their lead has grown to over 20 points. <laughs> right now, that's hot. Sarah Bacon and Cassidy Cook are hot. It's astounding. I mean, we've had again seven hours between sessions. It doesn't look like they missed a beat. No, they they have a cadence that I really haven't seen consistently. Certainly not three years ago because they started out with some rough spots in the prelims uh, three years ago. But they haven't missed a beat. They haven't missed a dive, and they're picking up momentum as they go along. Think about it. Cassidy Cook. We first saw her 12 years ago, 17 years old, in this event, missed making the Olympic team by a half a point. Partnered then with a multiple Olympian and Christina Lucas. And it was heartbreaking for them. It, that's what happens at the Olympic Games. Your emotions are just off the charts, one end and the other. That's the importance of this event. And this is now the individual dive list, so higher degrees of difficulty. Roselli and Geis scored 51 points, Fowler and Skulti 58. And Lily Whitty and Bailey Sturgill do a very nice inward two and a half. Again, when you're looking at younger divers that are learning harder dives, they're not going to score as high because their degree of difficulty might not be as high as Gibson and Palmer and Cook and Bacon. Okay, just shy 56 points, and again, the smiles unending for Witty and Sturgill. You might as well have a good time. Amen. <laughs> Endel Knight and Samantha Pickens now. And they've been uh, steady. They've held third place both through the afternoon dives and now into the evening. Let's listen for the verbal cue. begin that rhythm with the verbal cues and to have that cadence. Samantha Pickens, nearest us, gave the cues, and she is the oldest diver in this competition at 32 years old, and she has gotten better with time. <laughs> Fine wine. <laughs> I like that. Now, last May, Allison Gibson was working in Austin, Texas. She had been a diver at Texas, and she was working for a strategic communications firm. Krista Palmer called her and said, why don't you come back? And Allison Gibson said yes. Krista Palmer told her coach, they videotaped the conversation, the coach, John Lee Yu, screamed yeah. with joy. <laughs> she went berserk. synchronization. Krista Palmer on the left is out further in the middle of the pool and the judges would deduct from one half to two points for that. And that's the little bit of difference in the details that we're seeing in Cook and Bacon and Palmer and Gibson right now. That is going to make the road ahead very difficult for Gibson and Palmer. Can't hide it. Just 56 points on that dive. Sarah Bacon, her fourth Olympic trials. Any diver that's lasted as long as Sarah Bacon has an injury history. Hers is remarkable. Four back fractures, one of them just before the 2016 trials you see there. She was in a plastic brace for six months, yet still went to trials in 16. These and divers endure so much, and she hasn't made a team yet. Yep. This would be such a huge celebration, and again, the intensity, the focus looks different, but the celebration might oh. not. Ready? Yep. One, two, three, go. That was a big deal. 
That dive is one of their challenging dives. Can they be in front of the board without going off to the side? That's, a, that's something that they both corrected. Sarah is a little bit off to this side as she did the dive. So you might not see the nines, but they're gonna pick up points if they get above a seven. And when Bo Chen again, coach sees it and look at the score, 72 points at Cook and Bacon with just two dives left can start to see the finish line. A trip to Paris. Four U.S. Olympic trials are brought to you by Visa. Everywhere you want to be. That's Laura Cook in the front. That is Stephen Bar Bacon in the back. Peter Cook is just down the row there. Cassidy's dad, who was a college football player at Columbia. There he is with the hat on. That's so, Kevin. Excuse me, Kevin. That's okay. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that too often. Well. Right. Kevin, Kevin Cook. A proud Columbia Lion. <laughs> Cassidy Cook herself. You talk about injuries. Six surgeries in her diving career. She has stepped away from the sport three different times. She took a year off at Stanford. She stopped after the 2016 games. She stopped again after the 21 trials. But she and Bacon have been friends since eight. And just as the Gibson Palmer pairing, Sarah Bacon texted Cassidy after the World Championships in 22 and said, come on, think about it. And this is the result of those types of pairings and friendships that you develop in sport like this. It is fabulous. And Cassidy Cook has been thrown up through so much. She couldn't lift her arm. Her shoulder was hurting so much three years ago. And that's one of the reasons why they didn't make the team. But Gibson and Palmer were spectacular. All right, we're in the next to last round here. This is round four of five. And again, the uh, teams, especially these young teenage teams that are not in the competition for the spot, are still enjoying their Olympic experience. I love watching the overhead shot because you can see they go in the water, in the pool, at the exact same distance from the diving board. That's a big deal. And the judges do look at that. They're in unison. They're mirroring each other. That is really good synchronization. And they are rinse and repeat. They just, whatever their dive is, they just get out and are just loving it. <laughs> well, they're in the Olympic great. trials and they're they teenagers, know. you know? Exactly. Yay. Who wouldn't want to be them? That's right. <laughs> well, I got to say, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> So, as a general rule, a vertical rip entry, which means an entry without any splash, should be awarded one point more than exactly the same dive without a rip. And if you see the splash come out, which you see a little bit more on the right here than on the left, then the first six judges, three judge one diver, three judge the other diver, you will see a difference in the score. You see that four and a half? that entry and the amount of splash, etc. Well, it is uh, getting late in this competition for Gibson and Palmer. And Krista Palmer at 32 at another line yesterday that I love. She said, I'm 32, yep. but I feel young at diving. <laughs> it was a great synopsis. and bacon 35 points plus they need help but look at these spins very similar rates of rotation so much coordination in their movements wonderful over 74 points That's a good score yep. yes That's their best so far Now we're talking about the 
Cassidy Cook journey to this point. And I have a note that she told us in Rio. I can vaguely remember this eight years ago. Cassidy Cook said, it gives me joy to pursue a sport that takes guts. I love that one. Yeah, and she's always been gutsy, even as a little tight. on the right she's a little out of balance going into landing on the end of the board she lands a little bit to one side she doesn't panic that is the maturity and the experience being in your fourth olympic trials fabulous they're going to stay about 35 points ahead uh, determination rock jaw dad peter there that pays off and cook and bacon have done a great job to minimize the potential impact of the final <laughs> round dive. Consent of the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. One dive left. Sarah Bacon in the foreground has said there would be no words to describe living her dream since eight years old making the Olympic team. She's about five minutes away from having that challenge. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should breathe or not because it's never over until that last dive is in the water. And here we come with the final round. Gibson and Palmer need a whole lot of help. Just had Rosselli and Geis with their final dive of just over 51 points. There's Ann Fowler and Linus Sculte in their last dive. And what we have to emphasize again, we touched on this at the beginning, Krista Palmer and Allison Gibson have the toughest degree of difficulty dive in women's synchro as their last dive. The problem is the gap may be too big. I would say it's looking that way. But we never know. Got to do that dive. Yes. That's why we're here. The seven and change on the last dive. Fowler and Sculte. <laughs> that was a good performance by them. They got mostly sevens and above in their competition. The judges judge from zero to ten. That is better than average. And the uh, second teenage pairing in, out of the six teams or six teams in this final, Lily Whitty and Bailey Sturgill. Ready? Yep. Cards. One, two, three, go. Two teenagers diving out of different clubs in Indiana. And they are so happy to be here. That's the way it looks to me. They really are enjoying what they're doing right now. This is a really good sign for the future. And again, both in, well, Whitty's already diving at Indiana, and Bailey Sturgill's going to Rutgers to <laughs> dive in the fall. Good performance out of them. A lot of sevens also. <laughs> Congratulations to them. listening to Sarah Bacon in some of her prior interviews, and she's admitted she didn't take to synchro at first. She had to learn to like it. I think Done the a good United job. States was in that position. Yeah. They were so used yeah. to focusing on the individual Olympic events. Well, we're seeing some really pretty dives, even though some of the takeoffs aren't very balanced. But I want to complete that thought about embracing synchronized diving when you get to the olympics there are only eight teams competing for medals you beat five teams you get a medal and and cook and bacon in the driver's seat right now are a very good bet for a medal if they win this competition so there's the last time again mostly sevens for knight and pickens and now one last roar for krista palmer and Allison Gibson, the same final dive they did three years ago in trials. The only team in women's synchronized diving to do this one. That's a good dive. You know, that is, they should be congratulated for stepping up their degree of difficulty 
and doing dives like this because this is the kind of degree of difficulty that will win gold medals at the Olympic Games. And there's nobody else doing it. Good for them for doing it. They could win a contest doing that, but right now they need a whole lot of help. Very nice dive. Again, over 74 yes. points. Yep. Beautiful. And a nice salute there from Krista to her family. Both Krista Palmer and Allison Gibson will be here later in the week in the individual three meter. And now, Sarah Bacon on the left, Ready? Cassidy Cook on the right. One dive for the Olympics. Yep. They need scores of four and a half from One, the judges. Two, three, yeah. This was a rematch of three years ago when Palmer and Gibson won the spot. Thank you. But now Thanks, Matt. it is the dream. And he heard somebody say, give Sarah Bacon the ring because she's going to the Olympics. Your hand. The focus and intensity paid there off it is. greatly. Look at Cassidy she's Cook doing getting her Olympic ring given to her by her Olympic teammate. And the incredible class of the congratulations they got from Gibson and Palmer. There's the family, Peter and Laura, holding up. It's a family yeah, of Kevin friends. And Laura holding up the the uh, the yes, rings. Yes, 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 yes. Steve and Barb yes. are right behind the yes. Bacon's. How proud they are! Let's yes. hear from the newest members of the United States Olympic yes. team. Well, Ted, we had talked so much about the injuries and the heartbreak. Sarah, we saw the tears start to flow once you realized that you had made your very first Olympic team, but put into words your thoughts and your emotions when you realized it. I don't even think it sunk in yet. I, I don't even know. I can't even speak right now. I just honestly want to see my family and my coach and then celebrate with my yes. partner tonight. <laughs> so you, the, the water work started for you as well, Cassidy. You're going back to the Olympics for a second time, but the first time in eight years. Yeah. Can you describe what's going through your mind and your emotions? I'm just so excited to be back on that stage. Um, I've been through a lot, and we've been through a lot as a team. Injuries, COVID, just, you know, having to bounce back from a lot. And so to be able to share this Olympics with Sarah and do synchro means everything in the world to me. Well, you guys have been friends since you were, what, like eight or ten years yeah. old. So what extra layer does that add to your Olympic story? Uh, a big one, I think. I mean, we were always, like, going one and two at nationals when we were eight years old, all the way up through our careers. We had injuries at different points and times in our lives. So Synchro for us didn't come along until later in our career. But, I mean, she's my best friend, and I wouldn't want to do Synchro with anyone else besides her. Well, I'm very happy to say for the first time in Knoxville, we'll see you in Paris. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. What an achievement yes. for Cassidy Cook, only the second diver to make non-consecutive teams. Patrick Jeffrey is here. He was Cassidy's coach at Stanford. He's the only other one to do it. Such good friends, the best. That was a medal-winning yeah. performance. That is what impresses me the most. Incredible pride. For the Cooks to see their daughter fight through multiple injuries to come back and make a second Olympic team and for the Bacons a dream come true. The U.S. Olympics 